Hello, I'm Garth Fagan. I'm going to be speaking to you about choreography. Uh, almost uh, seven years ago now, uh, I started this most incredible journey called Amazon.com. Actually, at that time, it wasn't even called Amazon.com. It was called Cadabra Inc., as in Abracadabra. That was the original name of the company. And I had phoned uh, a lawyer on the way to Seattle from a cell phone. And uh, he said, well, what do you, to incorporate the company? He said, what do you want the company to be called? And I said, Cadabra. And he said, Cadaver? And I knew that was a bad name. Um, we changed it a few months later. The, the wake-up call that led to starting Amazon.com was finding that web usage in the spring of 1994 was growing at 2,300% a year. And things just do not grow that fast. Uh, outside of, I guess, usually like petri dishes or something. I mean, it's a very, very unusual growth rate. And uh, you could tell anecdotally, even though there wasn't good uh, research on this at the time, that the baseline of web usage wasn't trivial. Uh, and so something with a non-trivial baseline growing at 2,300% a year uh, is, is, uh, is, is, is clearly going to be everywhere tomorrow. And so the question was, what kind of business plan would make sense in the context of that growth? And uh, I went through a whole bunch of different things and made a list of 20 different products looking for the first best product to sell online. Came up with books for a bunch of reasons, but primarily because books are very unusual in one respect, and that is that there are more of them than there are products of any other category. So there are literally millions of different books in print at any given time. And uh, computers are good at organizing such large selections of products. And, and uh, you could build something online that literally couldn't be built uh, any other way. You couldn't have a physical world bookstore or a paper catalog with millions of different books. Uh, and the primitive technology that was the web in 1994 clearly required that kind of uh, uh, characteristic for a business. It had to be something that could only be done in that way. So that's what led to books. When I uh, uh, decided to do this, I, I first talked to my, my wife, who is sitting here in the audience, and uh, she had married a, uh, a you know, relatively stable, goofy, but still relatively stable uh, person working at a Wall Street firm. We, I worked at a quantitative hedge fund, and uh, this was a hard decision. And I, I was looking for the right framework in which to make that kind of important decision. And, 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 and the right framework I found is a regret minimization framework. And I, so that's just a nerdy way of saying that you want to project yourself to age 80 and then think back over your life. And, and if, you're, if, you're, if you're 80, what are the th you want to minimize the number of regrets you have throughout that period of time. I think this is something a lot of people do, uh, maybe uh, subconsciously, they probably, very few people probably name it regret minimization framework because most people are healthier than that. <laughs> but, but it was uh, a very clear way for me to think about making that kind of life decision. Uh, and, the, and, and, and the way it helped was I, I thought, okay, if I go do this thing and participate in this thing called the internet that I genuinely believe is going to be a big deal, and if I fail, Am I going to regret having tried and failed? And I knew the answer to that was no. But I also knew that if I didn't try, that I would always regret that. I would always wonder, and it would haunt me uh, in, until that you know, mythical day, which I actually hope will come. My wife has tried to get me to eat better. Um, one of her heroes is Dr. Weil. So if you're in the audience, uh, you, you're, 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 you're dietary constraints are currently being inflicted upon me. Um, um, it, but I suspect it may help me uh, over the long term. And uh, so that, that, was a, uh, that was how the decision was made to go do this. And there are just literally tons of stories about the early days of getting Amazon.com set up. You know, we, we spent about a year uh, building the software infrastructure and getting all the vendor relationships in place and so on and so on. Uh, the day before we were ready to launch the store in July of, of uh, 1995, uh, one of the software engineers, we were looking at our little 400 square foot distribution center. 
And I remember very clearly this person looked at this. 400 square feet is about the size of a one-car garage. So it was a kind of a toy distribution center. And, and, and although there were real software systems behind it, and uh, he said, he looked at this little space, and he said, I can't figure out if this is incredibly optimistic or hopelessly pathetic. Um, and indeed, we didn't know. There really was no way to know uh, how customers were going to adopt this kind of technology in these very early days. Uh, there was a lot of uh, risk involved. In fact, also in the audience today are my parents who uh, were the original funders of Amazon.com. They invested about $300,000, which is roughly their, uh, you know, was, a, was a, a reasonably large fraction of their life savings. And, uh, you know, my dad's first question was, what's the internet? So they were not, uh, you know, betting on the concept or the idea. They were betting on their son. I told him I thought there was a 70% chance they would lose their entire investment that that was an important disclosure because I wanted to be able to go home for Thanksgiving dinner no matter what happened. Um, I'm very happy that the, that investment has worked out very well for them. But it was a, uh, a uh, uh, you know, I was giving myself triple the normal odds. Startup companies are very tricky things and, uh, you know, fewer than 10% of them actually go on to make any return on an investment at all. And so I was giving myself a 30% chance, and was wildly overconfident. But, uh, but things actually worked out. You know, the planets aligned in those early days. And startup companies need early planetary alignment because <laughs> there are so many things that can go wrong. And when we launched that store in July of 1995, we were shocked at the customer response. Uh, you know, literally in the first 30 days, we had orders from all 50 states and 45 different countries. Uh, and we were woefully unprepared from an operational point of view to handle that kind of volume. And uh, in fact, the, 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 we, this, we quickly expanded, we talked to our landlord and we expanded into a 2,000 square foot uh, basement warehouse space that had six foot ceilings. One of our 10 employees was 6'2". Um, he went around like this the whole time. And, and, um, uh, and we, were, we, were, we were doing our day jobs, which might have been you know, computer programming and uh, all the different things that 10 people will do in a little tiny startup company. And then we would spend all afternoon and into the wee hours of the morning packing up the orders and shipping them out. Uh, there, you know, I would drive these things to UPS, and so we'd get the last one, and we'd wait to the last second. I'd get to UPS, and I'd sort of bang on the glass door that was closed, and they always would take pity on me um, and sort of open up and let us you know, ship things late. Uh, we had so many orders that we weren't ready for that we had, a, 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 we had no real organization in our distribution centers at all. In fact, we didn't... Um, we were packing on our hands and knees on a hard concrete floor. And the, uh, the, the, I remember, just to show you how stupid I can be, I was, you know, it, it, my only defense is that it was late. But I, we were packing these things, everybody, everybody in the company. And, the, uh, and I had this brainstorm. And as I said to the person next to me, this packing is killing me. You know, my back hurts. This is killing my knees on this, this hard cement floor. And the person said, yeah, I know what you mean. And I said, you know what we need? This is my brilliant insight. We need knee pads. <laughs> I was very serious. And, and um, this person looked at me like I was the stupidest person they'd ever seen. They're like, I'm working for this person. This is great. <laughs> and um, said, what we need is packing tables. And I, I looked at this, <laughs> I looked at this person and I thought that was the smartest idea I'd ever heard. The, the next day we got packing tables and I think we doubled our productivity. Um, that early stage, by the way, of Amazon.com where we were so unprepared is probably one of the luckiest things that ever happened to us because it formed a culture of customer service in every department of the company, every single person in the company, because we had to work with our hands so close to the customers, making sure those orders went out, 
uh, really set up a culture that served us well. And that is our goal to be Earth's most customer-centric company. And I think um, this says zero now, which I'm suspecting means it's time to turn it over to questions. So I will do so. So we have time for about three questions. The balcony always gets uh, kind of neglected, doesn't it? Yeah, okay, go ahead. What advice would you give to an internet startup company now? What advice would I give to an internet startup company now? What, my, my advice would be the same for uh, any kind of entrepreneur, and that is make sure that you are focused on something you're passionate about. So if you look at the early internet companies, they were started and focused on doing something that they thought was very interesting long before the internet was fashionable in any way. Um, you know, I, I, you know, we are currently an underdog once again. We've been in business for six years and there was exactly one year where we were not the underdog and that was 1999. I like the, the underdog years because it makes, uh, you know, I liked it when all the people we hired, their parents told them they were crazy. Like that was the, that was kind of the good era. Fortunately, it's back. Um, in 1999, all the parents were like, you know, giving their brothers and sisters high fives. You know, my son is working at Amazon.com. So that's a very, uh, you can't follow the fashion when you're trying to do a startup company or I think really anything in life. But you have to, as an entrepreneur, if you're going to build a company, pick something you think is interesting that has the intersection of genuinely creating real customer value and then just stay right there and let the wave catch you. Um, <clears throat> Grant Hutchins from Edmond, Oklahoma. And, um, I was wondering what were some of the other products you considered and also on a kind of a personal note, um, you sell a lot of books, but do you ever read them? Yeah. So the, um, on the list, it's, the list was built by looking at mail order sales. So when I got the original list, it was sorted in order of size by mail order. So for example, apparel is a very large mail order category. So apparel was near the top of the list. So th that's right. The things that were that ended up near the top of the list were um, books is number one, obviously music videos, computer software, computer hardware. Those were the kinds of things near the top of that force ranked list. And then I'm sorry, I'm terrible at multi-part questions. What was your second question? Oh, yeah. I asked, um, do you read books very often? Oh, do I read books? Yes, in fact, I do. In fact, um, my, my parents will, uh, will attest to the fact that I was difficult to punish as a child because I was quite happy to be grounded. Um, and uh, you know, just stay in my room and read. I'm a big science fiction fan, um, and that's probably, I'd say at least half of my reading is science fiction, and it has been ever since I uh, spent those summers on my uh, grandfather's ranch, which I have to say, I know that we're having geography problems with the intros today, but that was in Texas, not New Mexico, but. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, it's only about 90 miles from where we are right now. Um, but uh, it's, uh, uh, so, and that, they had a little sort of Andrew Carnegie style library in that town and which very tiny library, but like, must have like, I bet a third of the collection, which was all donated by, you know, citizens of this 3000 person town, but a third of the collection was science fiction, um, because there was this one guy in town who loved science fiction. And so, uh, that's, uh, been a long, uh, uh, love affair of mine. And then my wife. Uh, inflicts good fiction on me every once in a while, and which I always end up loving. But uh, almost, my favorite novel is *Remains of the Day*. Yeah, should we take this one over here? Okay. Hi, my, hello. My name is Ian. I'm from Los Angeles. I'd like to thank you for Amazon.com. It saved me many times. I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't get the book at my local bookstore, but that's not uh, what I wanted to ask you. I want to ask well, you. no, but you can wax on about that if you'd like. That's. Uh, <laughs> I'd like to know, please, what is the role of risk in your life and risk in the success of what you've done with Amazon? So what is the role of risk in life? It's hard to do anything, I think. What, whatever it is that you want to do, 
you, there's going to be risk in your life. And risk is a necessary component of progress. So, you know, there are different uh, kinds of people that want to do different kinds of things in their life. Um, I, I, I like exploration. And in fact, I, I, I think that the, um, I kind of, I'm, a, I'm a little stymied because I'd really like to be a physical explorer. You know, I'd like to, I would have loved to have been, you know, Sir Richard Francis Burton or something like that. How much fun would that be to go, you know, search for the source of the Nile and, and uh, you know, have people throw spears at you and stuff. I mean, that just, <laughs> that just sounds great. Obviously involves a lot of risk. You find most geographical exploration, not all, to be sure, but most geographical exploration on Earth today uh, is uh, is somewhat contrived. You know, it might be something like circling the Earth in a balloon or something like that. Now, there are some very deep spots um, where you can still do that, and there are, uh, and then there, of course, there's space. I'm personally very interested in space and have been all my life, and would love someday to to do that. All of these things involve risk. I don't know how you can make any pioneering movements in the world of any kind, whether they be the geographical, physical exploration that I've just been talking about, or whether it be uh, you know, a more cerebral exploration of a scientific field, or I bet you could ask that question of every speaker here, and I bet that every speaker here has taken substantial risks, uh, whether it be intellectual or otherwise, to achieve what, they're, you know, what they've done. Um, and at Amazon.com, as a, as a company, that what you do, in fact, the early stages of the company are all about eliminating risk. You take those precious early startup dollars. In my case, those $300,000 from my parents, and then we raised a million dollars from 20 angel investors. You take those precious early dollars and you use them to systematically eliminate risks one after the other. And what you hope is that you get to a, 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 a company of a scale where the company doesn't need that kind of planetary alignment that it needs in the early days, but that instead uh, the company has more control over its own destiny. And then that actually, by the way, creates more pressure for that team of people who represent that company that, you know, in our case, the 7,000 folks at Amazon.com, that we have more pressure today than we did six years ago because now our destiny is in our own hands. You know, we've systematically eliminated those risks to where we have the assets we need to build an important and lasting company. So now if we don't do it, shame on us. Thank you. Thank you.